All right, 2 Timothy chapter number 4 again tonight, 2 Timothy chapter number 4, and we'll start uh, in that passage of Scripture, and then we'll uh, turn over to the book of Acts in just a few moments, so you can be ready for that, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 to start with, and uh, as, you're, as you're finding your place, uh, I mentioned in passing Sunday night that we're going to get the choir started uh, soon, and so I'm going to be scheduling a uh, music meeting here pretty soon, and I'll give you plenty of warning and announcement for all those in the choir, uh, in the music program, so we can get together, and because uh, we've been out of practice for a little while when it comes to the choir, and uh, and so we want to get everything on the, on the same page, so I just thought I'd mention that so that you can be uh, listening for that announcement, uh, but tonight we're going to be in 2 Timothy chapter number 4 again, and as I've mentioned several weeks ago, we got started, we're going to probably spend about a dozen, 12, 13 weeks uh, in this uh, last part of 2 Timothy chapter number 4, and the title of this series uh, is uh, Spiritual Companions, Ministry Companions, uh, and how we serve in ministry, and we serve in ministry together. Uh, now, we serve as the uh, local assembly, the Emmanuel Baptist Church. This is where God has put us. Uh, but we are in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we are trying to win people to Christ uh, for, uh, through his ministry, through his name, that is our goal. Uh, I'm glad that there are other like-minded ministries in New Testament Baptist churches around the world. Uh, we all have the same head if we're a scriptural church, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So as we serve together, we are serving pastor and people in the ministry, uh, in the Lord's ministry. We want to win people to Christ. And so through the years, uh, it's a wonderful thing to be able to serve God together for a long period of time. Uh, it is a wonderful thing to be a part of a church like this church and uh, grow up together. Kids grow up together. You see, uh, you, get, you experience mountaintop experiences. You go through valleys together, and, uh, but you serve the Lord together. Uh, the Apostle Paul is going, to, is going through a list of individuals, and we're going to read the text again tonight, and we're going to look at another one. And as we look at these characters, it's going to help us, uh, some we should avoid, some, we ought to say, that's a good target for me to emulate. Uh, I think there's going to be some, as we go through this list, that we can identify with and say, I may not be able, I am, God didn't allow me to be in this situation, but I can help the ministry here. I can provide some support here. Uh, I can be this uh, in the ministry. And so it wants to look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 again. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number 1. And it will read down through verse number 11. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. <coughs> and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Very briefly, I'll go through the introduction just, just again, as I've done every week. Uh, Paul is coming to the end of his life. He knows the end is there, for I'm ready to be offered. And he goes through uh, those, those famous last words, if you will. He's fought a good fight. He's finished his course. He's kept the faith. And then, as he makes this statement to Timothy, uh, we see in verse number 9, him speaking directly to him, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. The Apostle Paul was a greatly used man. We know that. Uh, what a mighty man of God. What a greatly... We, we, are still reaping the benefits of the ministry of the Apostle Paul as we sit here tonight. But make no mistake about it, he had the power of God on him like I don't know that any other man has ever had the power of God on him. But don't forget that he was still flesh and blood. Don't forget he was still human. Don't forget now as he comes to the end of his life, uh, I, I believe the flood of memories, the, the flood of experiences, uh, not necessarily I endured this or I endured that, but, that, but people who he had served with People who would mean something to him begin to come to mind. And he speaks to Timothy. We'll take one week and speak specifically about Timothy. But do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, 
Then we looked at this character already. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed unto Thessalonica, Christians to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Now notice verse 11 as we continue. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Now, tonight we're going to look at Mark, the profitable companion. Mark, the profitable companion. Let's ask the Lord to help us. Father, I pray that as we look into the Scripture tonight, may the Spirit of God be our instructor. May the Spirit of God uh, speak to our hearts tonight. Father, may we learn some things that will help us uh, be a better servant of yours. Uh, may it be all of our desire to uh, finish the fight, to keep the faith, to finish our course. And uh, Father, I pray that you would uh, make it so. May we allow the Spirit of God to work in our hearts tonight, strengthen your people, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we have already seen in this uh, passage of Scripture and have already uh, made the comments again, uh, Paul is coming to the end of his life, and he comments on Demas. He says, Timothy, come to me. He comments on Demas, uh, speaking that he, he, he loved the present world more than the Apostle Paul. And we spent some time looking at how Demas had served with Paul. Uh, we mentioned Luke and how Luke was with him. Luke was that faithful companion, and how he stayed with him to the end. Now, now we come to uh, Mark, and he says, bring him with thee. Timothy, when you come and make haste to come, but bring he, Tim, uh, Mark with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Now, I have to mention this. As we look at Demas, it, is, it has been preserved for all of eternity. What we know about Demas, he deserted. Now, we, we, he says, bring Mark, for he's profitable. I don't know about you, but I would like to be remembered for being profitable more than I'd like to be remembered for, for deserting. And I'm certain that Demas made those decisions, having loved this present world, he was enticed by this world, and he took what he felt was the easy way. He took, he took the short-sighted way and lived for now. But yet, we're going to see in the life of Mark, John Mark, as he's often referred to, we're going to see that there was a failure, but yet he is remembered as being profitable. Demas, we saw, that was served in ministry with Paul, with Luke, and deserted them. He started out well. He had some spiritual success, but he didn't finish. We're going to find in the life of John Mark, he finished, and Scripture says he was profitable for the ministry. Now, let me just mention here, that will be the goal of each and every child of God, to be profitable for the ministry. Now, I, I think there's some Christians, they've made their goal to be the hindrance to the ministry. And by the way, if you're not faithful in church attendance, you are a hindrance to the ministry. If you're not tithing, you're a hindrance to the ministry. If you've got unconfessed sin in your life, you thought this was going to be all positive tonight, didn't you? Uh, you're a hindrance to the ministry. I say that to help all of us. I don't want to be a hindrance. I don't want to be a hindrance. I want to be profitable. You can be profitable no matter what your talents. You can be profitable no matter what your past experience is. You can be profitable no matter what background you come from. You can be profitable for the ministry. That is the wonderful thing about the local church. We all can have a part in it. We all can be profitable. We all may not be able to do the same thing, but we all can add profit to the ministry. It come, I guess it comes back to uh, we've got to decide what we're going to live our life for. Are we going to live our life for us or are we going to live our life to be profitable for the ministry? Uh, I think it would be good for all of us to take a good inventory, whether you're in the service tonight or you're watching on live stream, take a good inventory of how profitable are you for the ministry. Now, I'm not talking about how profitable your, 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 your balance sheet is. I'm for that as long as you tithe. But how profitable are you to the ministry? What profit are you bringing to it? Uh, but we want to, you say, Pastor, we're talking about John Mark. We're not talking about us tonight. We look at the life of John Mark. Look, turn with me to Acts chapter number 12. Acts chapter number 12. And we're going to look into his life. And then there's some truths I want us to see about his life. 
We're going to read the first three verses to begin with in Acts chapter number 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Now, Scripture is very clear. Herod is wreaking havoc on the church. He kills, he kills James, and now he's arrested Peter. I'll not read all of the story. We're going to pick up it in verse number 12. But this is the account in Scripture where Peter is in prison and the angel comes, or the Lord comes and lets him out. He goes to the house where they're having a prayer meeting, and he knocks on the door. And we look at verse number 12. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. Peter knocks on the door. The, the young lady, Rhoda, comes to the door, and she sees Peter. She didn't believe it was him, and she goes and she shuts. She, she leaves him out. They're praying for him to be God to deliver him. God delivers him, and uh, she didn't believe it. So that that's the story. But I want us to see where that took place. That's a significant thing in in Scripture. But it took place at the house of Mary. We see is the mother of John, whose surname was Mark. John Mark. This is important because we find out that Mark John Mark grew up in a Christian home. Or at least he had a Christian mother. The church prayer meeting is taking place at his house. He was privileged to be around spiritual things. Mary, who we read of, his mother in verse number 12, had a brother whose name was Barnabas. Now, Barnab Bar uh, uh, Barnabas. Barnabas was a companion of the Apostle Paul. So John Mark had a Christian mother, and we know he had a Christian uncle, Paul and Barnabas. And so John Mark would one day accompany the Apostle Paul. Look in verse number 25 of Acts chapter number 12. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now, John Mark has got a privileged upbringing. It has been privileged, the fact that he grew up, and he, he's got a Christian mother. He's in a Christian home. When the church prayer meeting took place, it was taking place in his home. That's fairly significant. He is witness to Peter being delivered out of jail. It's in his house where all that took place. Now we find him with his uncle and Saul, or Paul, returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now he's going with the apostle Paul and his uncle Barnabas into ministry. He's on there. Uh, he's, he's going with them in ministry. That's a privilege that he gets to be a part of. Now we find... In verse number 13 of chapter 13, turn, turn over there just a page over. Now, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Perga in Paphlia, and John departed from, from them, returned to Jerusalem. Now, here is where John Mark leaves the company of Paul, leaves the company of his uncle, and he goes back to Jerusalem. If there's anything we've learned from the life of the Apostle Paul uh, through our many, many times of, of study, through different aspects of his life, the Apostle Paul took his ministry seriously. He took his mission as a missionary seriously. He was all business. He, was, he, had, he had something he was doing for the Lord. And John Mark leaves and goes back to Jerusalem. This obviously did not set well with the Apostle Paul. You say, Pastor, how do you know that? Uh, because uh, we find that in chapter, uh, let's see, chapter 15, verses 35 through 40, we read there that Paul and Barnabas are going to separate over this issue. Okay, now bear with me. John Mark, who has a great start. His mom, it's her house, they're having the church-wide prayer meeting. 
They see miracles because of it. He's got an uncle, Barnabas, a saved man, who brings him along with him with Paul. That's a pretty privileged start. He then, something, we don't know what it is, and I'll not speculate what it is, something caused him to leave them and go back to Jerusalem. Look at verse 35 of Acts 15. And Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. So they, they, Paul and Barnabas continued on. And then Paul decided to say, Hey, let's go back and let's visit all of the churches. Let's visit all the places that we have preached. I want to see how the brethren are doing. I want to see how they're growing. I, w- I want to see how, how I want to check up on them. I mean, I w- I w- we've invested I want to check up on them. Great idea. Verse 37, And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. Barnabas thought it was a great idea too. And I'll bring my nephew along with us, John Mark. Verse 38, but Paul thought not good to take him with him, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Notice how he's mentioned in this verse. Paul said, I won't take him with, you, with me. He's the one who left. He left when we were in minute. He left when we were preaching. He left when we were doing the work of the Lord. Verse 39, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended of the brethren unto the grace of God. Now, John Mark, over John Mark, Paul and Barnabas, who had been preaching the word of God, who had been doing the work of God, who had seen souls saved, who seen the brethren strengthened, had been so successful by the blessings of God, that they had churches to go back to and visit and see. But because Barnabas wanted to bring his nephew along with them, Paul was not on board with that. Paul did not agree with that because he quit, because he departed. These two brothers in the faith in the ministry, co-laborers, the scripture says the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. So you mean preachers have disagreements? Well, at least in the days of scripture they did. If preachers have disagreements, it's possible for Christians to have disagreements as well. And they disagreed sharply to where they broke fellowship. I guess Paul did not have a group of in the ministry to lecture him on the importance of unity amongst the brethren. Because Paul was not going to have it. So we look at this, and maybe you are asking the question. I know I asked the question because I wanted to study and find out. We know that they went their separate ways. Barnabas left with Mark and went to Cyprus. Paul went with Silas to accompany him on his journey. Here's the question I want to ask. Who was right and who was wrong in the argument? Because after all, as good Baptists, we have to choose a side, don't we? Who was right and who was wrong In the argument, was it Paul? Was it Barnabas? Now, I want us to consider both sides of this issue. Paul believed that John Mark was not ready. As I've already mentioned, Paul was on a mission. Paul was of the mindset, I was saved out of a wicked life. I persecuted churches. I shut down churches. I killed churches. I don't have a day to spare. Now, I've got to not just make up for what the, the, the wasted years I have, but I've only got a number of days, and I've got a mission that Christ has set me on. I don't have time to play games. I don't have time for those who are not serious about this. We have a world to win to Christ. That was the Apostle Paul. 
Who can fault him for that? He needed somebody he could depend on. And, 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 the, and the same is true today. Every Bible preaching preacher needs people they can depend on. Every student in a Sunday school class needs a Sunday school teacher they can depend on. Christians who serve the Lord need brothers and sisters in Christ they can depend on. Paul was not unreasonable in the fact, he said, I don't, there's, we may get thrown in jail. We may get beaten. I don't need to count on somebody who I may, the next day may be gone. He didn't think he was ready. He needed somebody he could depend on. He did not feel confident John Mark was dependable. You can't find fault in Paul for that. So Barnabas was wrong, was he not? Well, hold on before we draw that conclusion. Barnabas saw potential in John Mark. Now, if he had lived in the day we lived today, he would have got accused of just staying with him because he was family. But the quality we see here in Barnabas was the same one that caused God to send him to a newly converted Saul of Tarsus, who was now Paul. You think back to the conversion of Paul. When and and before we before we're too harsh on them, you and I probably would have been there too. Hey, here's a new convert. He needs to be strengthened by the brethren. Oh, who is it? Saul of Tarsus? No, thanks. <laughs> Don't want to have anything to do with it. It's a trick. This is the... But yet, there was a man who saw the potential in this new Christian. And certainly, Saul certainly had potential for the Lord. Barnabas saw the same thing in John Mark. He, just like we need people like Paul, we need people like Barnabas too, who see the potential in young and inexperienced Christians. This is where some, I wish we'd get a hold of this tonight. Some of you could have a ministry like Barnabas. And you'd be amazed when you got to heaven. There are new Christians. There, there, there's some, they, 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 even, even this Sunday, they'll, they'll walk, they not, haven't been saved very long. They, they don't understand everything that's going on around them. And somebody ought to look at them and say, they've got potential to be something. And quite frankly, if... There's anything that convicts Christianity, what I call Bible Christianity as a whole, is probably this. We're good at winning people to Christ, but do we see what they could be beyond that? And when Paul said, my days are limited, I've got a call, there's something that I've got to do for God, I can't. My life depends on the fact that I have to have somebody to depend on. I'm not taking him with me. You really can't fault Paul. Barnabas saw something in John Mark and was willing to invest in him before he was him. Quite frankly, there's too many in our churches today that are trying to hitch their wagon to the brightest star. Instead of finding that babe in Christ or that young man or that young lady who may have fallen flat on their face, they may have missed last Sunday. They may not have handled this whole pandemic like a seasoned Christian should, but somebody's got to look at them and say, we can't let them fall by the wayside. I see something in them, and I'm going to invest in them so that they don't fall. Because they do have value. You look at the Apostle Paul, and you can make the argument, if it was not for Barnabas, there would no be, be no ministry of Paul. Because before he was the Apostle Paul, he was the newly saved Church killer. 
God went to Barnabas, I got a great work for you to do. It's a fascinating passage of Scripture. I can imagine he did like any young preacher did. I'm ready. Show me the nationwide revival I'm going to bring. How big is the conference I'm going to preach in? No, there's a man I want you to go see. What's his name? Saul. But let heaven reflect through the ministry of Paul, but through the ministry of Barnabas, because he saw he was willing to see something that others wouldn't take the time to see. You know, we, you know, we do good in our in our churches again. Now I'm being very general tonight. Be good if there's some Christians who would just see the little boy that runs through and knocks the older people over. Instead of saying, I wish somebody would beat the fire out of him. Say, boy, I'm going to pray for him. God will use him. He could put all that energy into the work of the Lord. If, if we're not careful, we turn into Pharisees. We expect somebody who, on Sunday morning, confesses their new faith in Christ by Sunday night to act like they've been in ministry for 15 years. And they don't come back the next Sunday night and we're like, I knew they didn't get it. I knew they didn't have it. You know what you ought to do? You ought to be at their door on Sunday afternoon and say, hey, I just check it on you. Hey, hey, my, my husband and I, we're, 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 or my wife and I, we're going out to get some lunch do you and your husband, you and your wife, you want to go with us? That was Barnabas. Or, or maybe the pastors had to say, you know, this duty, this responsibility, just quite isn't for you because there's responsibilities with it and you need to stick with it. So uh, let's just push them aside. Or as Christians tend to do, we stumble and we fall. I wonder, I wonder, and this is how I convict all of us, myself included. I wonder how many have fallen by the wayside, and they'll be without excuse because we make our decisions, but if they had just had somebody care. Because I'm telling you, this would help us as a church. Because there's times I come to this pulpit, and I'm going to preach what the Lord has commanded me to preach and it's hard for a seasoned Christian to, to handle, much less a babe in Christ. They couldn't handle it. I knew it. Why don't somebody take them under the wing and say, let me, let, me, let, me, let me take the Bible and show you what pastor's talking about? Or why don't you meet me? Well, you can't meet for coffee anymore nowadays. But... Back in the old days, meet me for a cup of coffee. Is this making sense? Uh, Barnabas saw potential in John Mark when others did not. So who was right? In retrospect, they both were right. Paul had to fulfill the command that God had given him. Paul had to fulfill the call on his life. He could not do it and have those that were undependable around him. Something took place and John Mark said, I'm out of here. He turned back. And then when Barnabas said, let's, let's, let's bring him back, it was so sharp that these two who had ministered so peacefully and so effectively went their separate ways. Paul was not wrong, but neither was Barnabas. Barnabas invested into his nephew, who would later minister to various churches. He was also the same John Mark who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Without Barnabas, John Mark could have quickly fallen by the wayside, his potential for God never realized. On the other hand, Paul had the insight to see that John Mark changed, as we read in 2 Timothy 4, he said, bring John Mark because he's profitable. 
which tells us a lot about Paul. He did not hold John Mark's earlier failures against him forever. He allowed him to prove himself. Paul was not what I call a petty, petty preacher. He allowed people to grow. Just in case you didn't know, I'm one of these independent Baptists who will hold a strong stand and I'm going to draw a Bible line. But God help us. We get to a place where we don't give people the room to grow. Room to grow as a Christian. Room to grow as a person. That was the Apostle Paul. Now, that's just my introduction tonight. Let me tell you some qualities that John Mark possessed we see in the life of John Mark. I'll give them to you very quickly. Number one, he was willing to come back. He made a mistake by leaving Paul and returning to Jerusalem. He messed up. Fortunately, his love and commitment were strong enough they did not let the mistake define him. John Mark is a man that we see on the pages of Scripture that can be admired. We need men who, after making mistakes, can rise above those blunders and serve the Lord. See, what keeps Christians from serving God is not the fact that they stumble, they fall. It's not the fact that they ever backslide. It's the fact that they keep their, their pride keeps them from getting that right so they can go on and serve God. John Mark ought to be given credit because he was willing to come back. You know, and there's so much I could say about the study tonight, and, there, and there's so much truth and depth to it. But Paul was willing to bring him back, and John Mark was willing to go back. Paul was the one who said, you can't come with me. But yet here's the moment when Paul said, I need him. He's profitable for the ministry. And John Mark was willing to, he was willing, even after Barnabas took him, he was willing to hang in there, he's willing to grow, he's willing to stay faithful. And that is what we need. Now, let me, just, let me just clarify. Barnabas didn't take him and, and accept sin. Barnabas didn't change his standards or his stand to keep John Mark in ministry with him. This wasn't one of those situations. This wasn't a situation when there was a doctrinal change. Paul writes about that too. And there's a difference in, let's all get along. This is what you hear mostly today amongst, amongst us, is we need to all get along no matter what the doctrine. That's not Bible. We need to all get along because, because in spite of direction. That's not Bible either. If you had standards and you're, and you're dropping them, that's a direction I'm to separate from. If you had the right kind of music and now you don't, that's a direction I'm to separate from. If you had clear Bible distinctives in, 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 in lines and you don't now, that's a direction I'm to separate from. But somebody who's weak in the faith, those are the people we're separating from and we're holding hands with those who are darkly impure. And we wonder why our churches are as weak as they are. But he, John Mark was willing to go back Number two, he did not get angry at Paul. Some young men would have been insulted and offended by Paul's rejection of them. John Mark did not behave this way. You know why? Because he did not make it about himself. Let me put it this way. He didn't get on social media and mock and make fun of the Apostle Paul and call him a legalist. He didn't start a blog denouncing his independent Baptist roots because the Apostle Paul rejected him. He didn't get bitter. He didn't become a casualty because of the sternness and the unmovable spirit of the Apostle Paul. He didn't make it about him. He still served God. I mean, if as much as we're around each other at church, as much as we do together, somebody's bound to offend you. Somebody's bound 
to rub you the wrong way. Somebody is bound to, to just, just, just tick you off. And if you get offended, you're the one that needs to get your heart right. And, well, the pastor shouldn't have said something that way. Well, maybe I shouldn't have. That's very unlikely. But be that as it may, it's not about you and it's not about me. Have you ever, I just had this thought, have you ever have that turned around? Pastor, what, what if I came and said, you know, y'all didn't respond to the altar like I thought you should have when I preached. Now that line right there deserved more than two amens. I'm going somewhere else. Somewhere where somebody appreciates my preaching. He didn't get angry at Paul because it was not about him. I could say so much more on this subject because we have a generation of young preachers today that needs to hear that. Um, it's like they get their lollipop taken away from them. That's a whole other... Number three. Did I say he didn't change his beliefs because of the Apostle Paul? Okay, I said that. All right. Number three, John Mark allowed Barnabas to mentor him. That Paul rejected him for a season, John Mark allowed his uncle Barnabas to continue to guide him in the ministry. There will be rejections in God's work, but if we are committed to the cause, we'll allow ourselves to submit to someone who can help us be all that God would have us to be. Obviously, the Apostle Paul wasn't going to be the man. Barnabas was. And I'd say it turned out pretty well for John Mark, didn't it? God still used him in a great way. Matter of fact, yesterday morning, I read the entire gospel according to Mark from beginning to end. That's a pretty significant thing. But he allowed somebody else to mentor him. Christian, there's, there's something to not getting angry and bitter as we serve the Lord together, say, well, well, that I, I wanted to teach that Sunday school class, or I wanted to be able to do this, or I think I should sing the solo, or I think that this should take place. It may not work out the way you think it should work out, or maybe you stumble and fall and say, well, there it goes. No, you stay with it, you stay faithful. And he allowed Barnabas to mentor him. Number four, he became profitable. Paul did not just say that John Mark was beneficial to him personally. He said that he was valuable to him for the ministry. It's right there in 2 Timothy chapter 4. He didn't say he's profitable for my legacy. He's profitable for my name. He's profitable to, to, to help me gain some notoriety. He said, no, He's profitable for the ministry. And friend, that's what you and I need to keep our focus on. It's about the ministry. It's about the work of God. You and I are but mere pawns in the hands of God. That He chooses how He uses us. He chooses in the capacity He uses us. And we need to understand it's just our goal to become profitable. And He did. Paul, at the end of his life, he realized that John Mark had become an asset to the work. Paul saw the need for John Mark to accompany Timothy. Why? For the sake of the ministry. As a Christian, don't get so bitter and full of yourself that you become petty. We need each other. We need one another. You may think you don't, but that just reveals that you do. I mean, we, 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 we need, I mean, we, we, we make the mistake, we don't, we don't take the stands we should take, but yet we get petty and we get, we, get, we, get, we get in situations where it's like it becomes personal. It becomes really about personality. And we say, well, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I won't go to that meeting because brother so-and-so is there. 
Man, if preachers would get off of the phone. That's a whole nother. Amen. Well, never mind. Timothy was now in the role. Think about this. As Paul writes to Timothy, he's writing to Timothy, who's now in the role that John Mark was in. And now John Mark would accompany Timothy on this journey. He became profitable. I mean, I preach Sunday morning about there's times in our life where we feel like a broken vessel. We're just discarded. We're, 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 we're useless. But John Mark is a good example of that's why we don't quit. We get up. We keep going. We find some way to be profitable in the work of God. Number five and the last one, he was a servant. When we read the Gospels, we see Christ portrayed differently in each one. In Matthew, we see him as the King of Kings. In Luke, we see him as the Son of Man. In John, we see him as the Son of God. But in Mark, we see him in an altogether different light. We see him as a suffering servant. God used John Mark to write about the servant Jesus because John Mark himself had become a servant. We must remember God uniquely prepares us to do His work. Don't miss this next statement. It took failure for John Mark to become all that God wanted him to be. It took failure for him to become all that God wanted him to be. But he became a humble servant who would give us that great gospel according to Mark. John Mark was profitable. I wonder, and we don't really know. I wonder how many wrote John Mark off. In effect, Paul did. So I can't depend on you. I'm moving on. And can you imagine? Oh, well, if the Apostle Paul, there must be something wrong with him. Yeah, he quit. But Barnabas understood something that we all need to understand. Barnabas understood he wasn't done. He still had potential for the Lord. Aren't you thankful that God looks at us that way? I still think of that study we did on Gideon. And how God came to Gideon and God was looking, talking to Gideon as of what he saw him to be, not what he was. And I wish Christians would realize that. I wish, quite frankly, as your pastor, I wish some of you, some of you would realize that. God sees you as what you could be for Him. Your pastor sees you for what you could be for Him. Let's be profitable. And if there comes a time in ministry when there's a disagreement, let, let, let's not get angry, let's not get bitter. We see a good example of there's a break over John Mark, and they were both right, in my opinion. Russell, is there both justified in taking the position they took? Barnabas saw something and said, I'm going to invest in that potential. There's a lot of different aspects that we can follow in this study. We can follow Barnabas, how he saw the potential. There's a reason why Paul said, Bring me John Mark. He, he's profitable, profitable to me for the ministry. I want to be profitable. You say, well, you know, I wonder how many times between the break and then Paul ever conversed with John Mark, if at all. But yet when it came down to the ministry, bring me John Mark. If we just set about to be profitable to the Lord... He'll give us the confidence and the, if I could put it like this, the pat on the backs that we need in order for, to keep us going. I, I'm finishing. You want to go ahead and stand so it makes you feel like I'm finishing? Let's go ahead and stand. I wonder what John Mark's reaction was. When the letter came, 
And Timothy went to John Mark and said, you've got to go with me. Well, where are we going? Paul is in prison. It's coming to the end for the man who's made such a difference in our life. I wonder if John Mark would say, oh, I'm so, sorry to hear that. It, he would say, you're going with me. Why would I? Go? He asked for you. Because he said you're profitable to his ministry. Imagine if John Mark had got bitter. He just started sucking his spiritual thumb and sat in the corner. Nobody appreciates what I do for the Lord. Nobody knows how tough it is. The pastor said hello, but I just know he wasn't sincere about it. He would have, he, he'd have missed out on facing his Savior as a faithful man. If you and I are faithful long enough, the people who have made a difference in our life, we can be an encouragement to them. I wonder how many times Paul sat in that prison. He had faith like you and I do not have. But he was still a man. And in a, few other, in a few verses later, and we'll get to this on one Wednesday night, he says, no man stood with me. He had to, from time to time, wonder, has everybody forgotten? John Mark, Timothy, bring him with you, for he's profitable for the ministry. Let's be profitable. Lord, help us to be profitable to the ministry, profitable to you.